All right. Welcome to today's Talking at 12 session. Today I'm joined by the WSU jazz faculty, or I should say members of the jazz faculty. We have a couple others like Steve Hatfield, but today I am joined by, at the bottom of my screen, I don't know where it plays out on your screen, uh, William Flynn. Uh, Will is the director of the jazz area, as well as uh, associate professor of guitar, uh, electric guitar, jazz guitar. And then right below me on my screen is Jim Pisano. And Jim is uh, sort of new to the faculty, second year, right, that you just finished? Yep. Um, director of our jazz ensembles, Jazz Arts One. Also uh, professor, uh, instructor of saxophone, teaches our saxophone lessons, both classical and jazz. Uh, and then to my corner here is John Gehring. Uh, John Gehring is uh, our, uh, teaches jazz piano, directs Banda Hispanica, our sort of Latin jazz group ensemble, as well as teaching world music, um, music appreciation, and basically anything else we beg him to do. Uh, and then finally, but not not to least is Dr. Mark Foley. Mark Hello. Foley is the, um, a long history at WSU School of Music, but most recently has stepped into the role of coordinating our audio production program mm -hmm. as part of the School of Digital Arts, but also is uh, our professor of bass, uh, both classical and jazz as well. Um, so I think that's everybody and all of your official titles. Is that, did I miss anything? Yeah. yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Having us. I will also say that, uh, not, not pictured, um, as well. We have, uh, Steve Hatfield, um, who teaches jazz drum, uh, drum set for us. Um, and, uh, also there's a, there's a oh, Matt Blower who teaches jazz trombone. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have jazz trumpet, so a lot of things there, but here's our core five for today. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so I think the, the first big question that I'll, I'll direct to you, Will, as the, um, as the area sort of head. Yeah. So if, I guess two, it's a two part question. The first is like, what what does it mean to be a jazz major? Like if I'm a potential student thinking about all the different majors, why would I choose a jazz major instead of just a regular performance major? Sure. And if I want to be a jazz major, what does that process look like? What's the audition process for right, that? Right. So I would say anyone who's interested in performing like contemporary American music, um, you know, out of like the black tradition, jazz, blues, rock, um, anything like that, anything contemporary, um, as opposed to, you know, kind of like European art music, quote unquote, classical music, um, getting some rudimentary jazz skills together and studying jazz in, um, in the post-secondary um, setting is going to provide you with a lot of of skills that you can take to play all different sorts of styles of, of contemporary Amer American music. Whether you wanna be like a hardcore jazz bebop player, um, whether you wanna be like, you know, a pit musician that does theater gigs, whether you wanna be someone that does like top 40s gigs on wedding gigs and that kind of stuff. Um, if you're looking to be a jack of all trades that can play lots of different styles, that can read well, that can improvise over harmony, um, and that can, can kind of wear a lot of different hats. The skills that you develop in a jazz curriculum are really gonna, gonna prepare you to, to do all those things. Um, to audition to be, to, or to become a jazz major at, at WSU, um, you can go on the website, you can check out some of our audition days, um, and you can choose one of those and select the jazz and contemporary media area of study. Um, we just ask our auditionees to prepare a few jazz standards. Um, we have some suggestions listed on the, on the jazz area of the website. Um, and just come in and play for us, you know, with, with a backing track um, on one of the, the audition days and kind of hang with us and chat with us and get to know us. And even if you're not planning on being like a jazz major, um, if you played in jazz or if you played in jazz band in high school, 
um, and you're interested in being involved with the ensembles here, uh, we would totally love to meet you on an audition day and, and hear from you and, um, and all that good stuff. So. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great point to make is that, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more about who, who can be in what ensembles, but our jazz and commercial music program is not just limited to jazz majors alone. Um, just for some clarity, you know, I think it's important to be transparent. Um, so as far as, as welcoming jazz majors, there are some specific instruments we have jazz majors for, but there's some that at this point in time we don't have. Is there anybody who can't be a quote unquote jazz major or that we don't offer jazz major to? Hmm. Any instrument or voice type? Or yeah, anything? I mean, we, I mean, we kind of offer like the standard, um, I guess it just kind of comes down to uh, what the what the studio teaching availability is like, you know, what, yeah. what we can handle in terms of that. Uh, but right now we've got jazz majors on guitar, uh, drum set, bass, keyboard, um, oh. saxophone, saxophone, trombone, trumpet, you know, kind of all the standard instruments in, in, the, in like a large jazz ensemble. And, you know, I think there's some flexibility to this in some ways, because I know in the past we used, we did have a jazz violin major one time. Mm -hmm. Um, we I have know, a clarinetist as well. Do, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I know that uh, jazz voice is something that we we haven't really been able to do recently, but it's something I know that we're sort of interested in trying to Absolutely. add into the curriculum if we can. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yes and no. I mean, okay, because it has to be said that there's a lot of fluidity in in the uh in the curriculum so we aren't just siloed so when you come to to campus as a freshman you're not branded as a jazz player or a classical player exactly. and you get a chance to to try out the waters um yeah. the curriculum is designed so that uh everybody is kind of starting out from the same place and then as you figure out what your life path is going to be you'll you'll um, you know, it'll branch into those specialties, but, uh, you know, even a classical player can take jazz music theory as their music theory uh, requirement. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And that's great. Yeah. So one thing, well, so you actually, Mark, this wasn't in my prepared questions, but since you brought it up, um, so, you know, we think of the jazz major, obviously there's the performing aspect of it, but there is also the quote unquote academic side of the jazz major. So what are some of the classes on the academic side of the jazz major that we would take? So everyone takes theory one and two, mm -hmm. no matter what your major, but then the next year you would take? You could take theory three and four and, and the uh, oral skills that go along with that. Um, so those have are jazz specific sections for jazz theory. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've got jazz arranging, which John teaches. Mm -hmm. And um, help me out, guys. And what other jazz, classes? Jazz history. Yes. Jazz, improv. jazz, jazz improvisation. Improv. There's a jazz styles course as well. Is that true, or am I making that up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. So there's a bunch of. That's the other thing that I think is really important. Is just like the. Um, a classical performance degree that you take like literature courses and orchestration for we have the same thing on the jazz side so you're going to learn jazz literature and styles you're going to learn improvisation arranging theory, all of those things right mm -hmm. oh uh, yeah and then so, we, have, we have some tech courses that are required in the jazz major uh, the intro to music tech and, and industry and then the intro to music business Right, that's well. right. So getting getting all those all those skill sets as Which well. Which at this time is not a requirement for the classical music majors, um, but is for composition majors and jazz majors. And I think there's a lot of talk about making those required of everybody at some point. Right. Uh, we have to we have to plug in um, the music music ed majors into this too, because there's a huge demand for band directors that can also teach jazz band. Right. And that's. That's baked into our program too. You know, if you, if you were a classical player, but wanted to have those skills, we can help you out. 
I think, you know, yeah, I think that this idea, that's a great point, Mark, that this idea that you are a music educator who's going to go into a K through 12 sort of situation and um, just be the director of a wind ensemble and only have to do that is so, it, it's, you know, it's bonkers. You're like, you're probably going to have to direct a big band. So there's something to be said about playing in a big band, which is a great segue to Jim Passano. I'm going to throw it to you, my friend. <laughs> Um, so can you talk about uh, some of the different ensembles at Wichita yeah. State and who's allowed to play in which ensembles? Great. Yeah, we have uh, currently we have two large jazz ensembles like your traditional big band, um, Jazz Arts Ensemble 1, Jazz Arts Ensemble 2, and uh, I direct the uh, Jazz Arts 1. And our um, teaching, a uh, jazz teaching assistant, uh, Kurt Gary, he's a phenomenal uh, jazz percussionist. Uh, he's coming in, he's joining us in the fall, and he's going to be directing um, Jazz Arts too. And all those, uh, those two large jazz ensembles are open to auditions um, to anybody. And uh, I have a, a, a wonderful mix of jazz majors, and this is in all of the ensembles, jazz majors, classical majors, and under classical majors, we have both music ed and performance and non-majors. Uh, I'll tell you, our lead trumpet player um, is an architect major, and uh, he he's phenomenal lead trumpet player. He actually made the... Um, um, Disney All-American Jazz Band. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate he wasn't able to perform in it because they didn't have it this summer because uh, of, of the issues with COVID. But yeah. uh, he's he, he played the audition and um, and made that chair. Um, so both those ensembles do between two and three concerts per semester. We have like concert blocks that we rehearse for. Um, and we do a large uh, variety of repertoire, um, everything from uh, Duke Ellington to Thad Jones to, um, uh, uh, I did a lot of uh, Quincy Jones last, last yeah. year. Um, some, I try to do some lesser known um, composers like Oliver Nelson. Well, I, I'd like to do the Oliver Nelson suite uh, yeah. this year uh, and some of the Duke Ellington suites too, um, you know, in addition to his traditional like Cottontail and, and yeah. you know, the traditional Thad Jones stuff. So, and then contemporary things like by Toshiko Akiyoshi um, and uh, Maria Schneider. I, I program quite a bit of that. And then, you know, in the, in the second jazz ensemble, it's an opportunity for students to get a little bit more exposure or to um, the standard jazz repertoire, lots of Sammy Nestico, lots of uh, early bassy um, band type type things, and uh, it's it's a wonderful opportunity for students to to get um, some soloing experience too. And again, in all these ensembles, um, the thing I want to stress is they're open to auditions to all students in all majors, but also there's, you don't have to improvise. Sometimes that scares some people um, about playing in a large jazz ensemble because they, they feel like they're gonna be forced to improvise. And, and I'm certainly encouraging of it. And I will work with students outside of uh, ensembles if they want. And certainly, as we just mentioned before, there, 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 there's the resources here at the university and the School of Music to study jazz improvisation, but it's not required. Yeah. So um, uh, that's that's a, a big thing. So those are the two large jazz ensembles. I'm also very passionate. Dr. Foley was mentioning about vocal uh, jazz. We've had a singer guest w with us. He was masters in theater uh, performance, and he was a phenomenal uh, jazz vocalist. And he um, played uh, several numbers, sang several numbers with with the band. And we've done some off campus performances too that have been really fun, like swing type gigs uh, in the community. So. Uh, we've had a tremendous amount of um, uh, varied repertoire. And then, of course, guest artists. Uh, that's something that we're passionate about at the School of Music and the Jazz Division. We've had uh, uh, some wonderful tenor saxophonist, uh, Adam Larson. We had the great Pat Bianchi, uh, jazz organist. He just won uh, up-and-coming jazz uh, organist in Downbeat. Uh, he won top in the first place for that. Uh, and then we had Sean Jones scheduled, a wonderful world-class uh, trumpet player uh, scheduled to perform with us in, in April. And unfortunately at the Invitational, we didn't get the opportunity to do that. But um, th those are the types of artists that we're passionate about and, and um, committed to bringing in. And we feel that one of the best ways for students to learn about this music is to collaborate with the top musicians in the world. 
Um, and I can say working with these gentlemen here, um, they're wonderful players and we collaborate um, in the School of Music and outside of the School of Music as well, professionally. And that transfers into our um, delivering of this jazz language to the student. But also these wonderful guest artists from around the country and around the world come uh, and join and, and enrich the campus at WSU. Yeah, we're going to talk more about the Invitational a little later, but you know, through the Invitational, our students have had chances, and actually not even outside of the Invitational. I know our students have been able to play with like Pat Matheny, yeah. um, John Fedchok was here a couple years ago, my buddy John. So yeah, we've got some really big, uh, big, big hitters who have come in for sure. And I haven't even mentioned about the, our small jazz groups, jazz combos, jazz guitar ensemble, and banda hispanica. So I was thinking that maybe the people that direct those could maybe speak. speak yeah, more. I wanted to throw it over to John. Um, so John, uh, we, we talked about sort of the, the two sort of primary big bands, jazz arts one, jazz arts two. There's another, it's an ensemble that, you know, is not quite a small group, not quite a, not quite a big band, but it's your group, it's Banda Hispanica. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about Banda and uh, what it looks like and how you can get involved. What is it? And then how do I get involved with Banda Hispanica? Okay, sure. Uh, so Banda Hispanica is a eight to 12 piece mid-sized ensemble. Uh, the instrumentation is typically three or four horn players, three percussionists, piano, bass, could have guitar. Uh, usually we've had singers. It performs a wide range of Afro-Caribbean music. Uh, so that includes salsa, Latin jazz. It has included South American music from Brazil, samba, bossa nova. Uh, we're getting into some music from Mexico uh, recently. So it, we've played stuff from Colombia. So really from a wide, uh, and certainly from the United States, Latino communities uh, in the United States as well. So a wide range of music. Uh, as far as students getting involved, it's the audition process is very similar to what Jim described for jazz arts. It's open to both music majors and non-majors. Uh, the rehearsal time for this band has been Sunday night. So I'm assuming that'll probably uh, continue uh, at that time. So it's, uh, it's not a huge time commitment for students if they have an interest in this area. It definitely helps with their rhythm because almost all this music is highly uh, syncopated and rhythm rhythmic, whether for the percussionists or the horn players. So, uh, and, and I'll just mention too, the band has played quite a bit out in the community over the last two or three years. So a lot of gigs down at Barley Corns and tons of other venues, hotels, uh, just a lot of, a lot of things, outdoor concerts. So it's a good chance for students to kind of get their feet wet uh, actually doing some gigs. Yeah, so um, just to, to double check, so like if I've never played Latin music before uh, and I don't know a two, three clave, you know, son clave from a rumba <laughs> clave, am uh, I still welcome to, to try to be in your group? Am I going to be okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, that's, yeah, absolutely. That's the, the point of it, really, uh, it, to a degree, is to, you know, uh, introduce people to this genre and, and you learn it by doing it. Yeah. You know, you, you don't you don't learn it by uh, studying it out of a textbook. You learn it by playing it. So, absolutely. Um, so we talked about sort of the the two big bands, the, more, the most traditional sort of ensembles. Then Banda Hispanica is like sort of that mid size large ensemble we have. And then there's our I don't know. Do we call them small groups here or combos? Uh, combos. We call them combo. See. Yeah. I had a jazz teacher in undergrad who would get really mad at that. He'd be like, combos are what you get at McDonald's. You play in a small um, group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Change it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but we have our, our uh, combos program, and we also have the guitar ensemble program. Mm -hmm. uh, Will, I'm going to throw it to you if you want to sure. talk a little bit about those. Yeah, so the combos, um, we kind of share the different jazz faculty members share um, responsibility coaching the different um, combos. Um, and you audition for those and guitar. I'm the director of the guitar ensemble, but all these ensembles you audition for in the, in the same way that, that Jim was mentioning. Um, the combos, um, we like to give the combos a lot of autonomy to kind of run the show themselves. Um, we, they rehearse twice a week, once with a faculty coach and once just on their own. Um, and it's really you know, the best laboratory environment to work on the practical skills of improvising 
and learning a tune from a lead sheet or from a recording as opposed to um, like a written arrangement that you'd look at yeah. in like a large ensemble um, and really focusing on improvisation, which is like totally the heart and soul of, of this music, you know, um, and really getting, getting deep into that. Um, the combos perform a couple times a semester. We encourage and require them to get off campus and perform at different venues around town. We encourage all those students to come to local jam sessions and play with, with local pros and, and WSU faculty. Um, and yeah, it's, it's the best time to really get deep into small group interplay and, um, and improvisation. And then the guitar ensemble um, rehearses twice a week. It's anywhere from, I've had like three guitars in it. I've had seven guitars in it. Um, it's kind of a, a fluid, um, you know, instrumentation in terms of ensembles. And then a two piece rhythm section, bass and drums. Um, and that focuses more on reading arrangements and just reading in general, which is totally the Achilles heel of, of every guitar player, you know? Yeah. So it's really kind of like, like reading boot camp. But we also work on all the skills that you would work on in, in the combos, you know, because a lot of the charts are, are maybe a little more simple um, and focus a lot on, on reading chord changes, you know, and, and that kind of thing, so. And just to, you know, uh, I guess make it clear. So the combos, you know, cause you talk a lot about it, they're heavy on improvisation. And mm -hmm. um, again, though, if I'm a beginner, you know, if I've never, if, you know, let's even say like I'm a violinist or a violist and I want to play in a combo, I've never improvised in my life. Is there a combo that I can play in as well and learn those skills? Yes. Yeah, we definitely take into account. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's not like they're really intense, you know, um, you know, cutthroat ensembles where you're where you're having to, you know, burn over giant steps. And stuff. Right. <laughs> we definitely kind of, you know, put the groups together um, with the students, um, you know, interest and level in mind and, and try to create a good you know, educational environment for everyone where everyone's going to feel comfortable and make some good music and, and learn something. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm going to throw this over to Mark for a second. Yeah. Um, so you teach both classical bass, but you also teach jazz bass that includes mm -hmm. upright and electric. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jim teach classical and jazz saxophone. Will teaches um, jazz guitar. John teaches jazz piano. Can you talk a little bit about what the private lessons are like for um, for like what are private jazz lessons and how do those differ than my regular classical lessons or how and how are they similar? And then if anyone else wants to jump in on that, feel free. But I, I thought I'd start with Mark. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good question. You know, because classical jazz is still the same instrument, we <laughs> still have the same technique, um, the same physical problems of playing your instrument I play the bass which is physically very hard so I talk a lot about physical problems yeah. we do a lot of scales uh, I hope you like scales because I scales love scales. arpeggios <laughs> yeah uh-huh um, I developed a new passion for them that's for sure <laughs> yeah good good because that's yeah okay don't get me started yeah. but um yeah so like I, I I try not to like again not put a big dividing line between the two styles uh there's you you do a lot of goal setting you um do a lot of um you know deciding what you're going to work on and uh and you go for it and then our job is to figure out the materials look at at your technique look at your musicality and see where we can go uh and also feeling out you know whether it's classical or jazz where your interests lie like where what is your voice what do you want to actually say on your instrument you know for yeah. me it's i try to be ambidextrous i i really um i would be so sad if i had to give up one or the other so um yeah that's a part of the goal setting process is figuring out where where are your dreams where where are you going to shine yeah yeah i would like to yeah I would like to, you know, tag along with that. I'm, I'm definitely um, passionate about having students have their hands in both 
like whether they're a jazz major, they're still involved in classical playing and vice versa. If they're classical playing, they're getting some jazz improv experience. And I find that that helps them be a little bit more diverse. And so when they, you know, leave the institution or move on to the next step, they're prepared to play in different musical situations. And that's really beneficial for them in an extrinsic way. Um, you know, jazz lessons, uh, just like Dr. Foley said, we have weekly goals, um, you know, for, you know, in a classical lesson, it might be an etude or a, a movement of a work for that week. Uh, and then for um, jazz lessons, it might be working on a particular tune and learning the melody and, and chord changes and learning how to improvise on that. Uh, I'm heavily involved uh, students with uh, transcription, listening to the uh, the masters, so to speak, and imitating them and imitating their sound. You know, we talk a lot about the differences of a classical versus a jazz sound. Well, one of the best ways to do that is to imitate the sounds of the of the pinnacle players. So, you yeah. know, on the jazz side, transcribing. Um, a, uh, a a Sonny Rollins solo, and then transcribing a John Coltrane solo and Charlie Parker, and then on the classical side, listening to you know French classical vibrato, American classical vibrato, and see how they differ, and and see kind of where where the students are coming from, and how that they can incorporate that into their own playing. So very listening oriented. Yeah, I love that. That's I think really important. You know, I know from um, a performance medium so much of playing playing jazz music is about a style right and yeah. it has always been based in an aural tradition you know we notate it now but it was an aural tradition and the really the only what you can you can mathematically divide up the triplet and you can talk about it story <laughs> downbeats and all of that but at the end of the day the only way you can really learn how to swing is by listening yeah. and then and playing along i mean I think that's really uh, that's a really critical part of it. Yeah. Um, so, Will, I want to toss it over to you for a second sure. and uh, talk about the Jazz Invitational. Yes, um, which is yeah. uh, and let's pretend like COVID nineteen is not happening. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, could you talk like a little a... Bit about the history of the Jazz Invitational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how it's connected to the Wichita Jazz Festival, how it's not connected to the Wichita Jazz Festival, and what does that usually look like? Yeah, so um, the WSU Jazz Invitational happens on a Friday in April, annually, um, and it's part of the Wichita Jazz Festival, um, which is a local community jazz festival, um, which is one, actually one of the nation's longest running and most historic jazz festivals. Um, and it's kind of the biggest kind of jazz party that happens in the School of Music every year. You know, it's a very exciting time um, to be a jazz major here, not only during, you know, during that day, but also during the, the Wichita Jazz Festival. Um, and yeah, it has a long storied history um, being connected to, um, to this great jazz festival here in town, which some others that have lived here longer than I have could, could probably speak to. Um, but it's, it's a time for high school and college big bands uh, from all around the area, you know, both the, the immediate area and surrounding states and, and other parts of Kansas to come and play um, on campus and hang out. Um, we bring in a fantastic slate of jazz musicians and educators to judge these bands and interact with the students and interact with the, the band directors, um, as well as bring in a fantastic guest artist. You know, Jim was mentioning that we had Sean Jones booked to come here today, who's definitely like, you know, one of, one of the best jazz trumpet players on planet earth right now. Um, and he was gonna, he was gonna play with um, Jazz Arts Ensemble One. He was gonna play with, um, with a high school honor band that Jim conducts the Mid-Kansas Jazz Ensemble. Um, he was going to work with the students. Um, and yeah, it's just a great day of jazz and, and jazz education that's part of um, a bigger community festival that, that celebrates this art form uh, in Wichita. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's a couple other things that we're, I don't want to necessarily ask questions about, but I think that are also, well, actually, I'll ask a question about John and actually any of you, but let's start with John. I think one of the things that's cool about Wichita um, is that because we're in a metropolitan area, there's 500,000 people, you've got what's happening musically on our campus, but there's also a kind of a cool jazz scene that you're all involved in. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I kind of just want to go around the room a little bit if, and just talk about, if I'm a student here, you know, there's something important, I think, not about just playing jazz, but like going to hear it played live. And we're really fortunate that we've got an actively performing jazz faculty. So just sort of starting with John, can you tell us, again, COVID-19, all of that aside, what's some of the performing that, that you typically do um, and, and where, do you, where do you get involved? Sure. Well, uh, over the years, it's been, you know, everything from what we call casuals in the jazz world, which is anything playing for wedding receptions, playing at restaurants, uh, you know, all of that at, uh, you know, down on the waterfront of uh, Newport Grill has jazz outside played. In fact, I think that Alex played bass with us down there a few years yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, played with uh, Mort's at Jim. I'll let Jim talk about Mort's because that's one of the best things happening right now, I think. Uh, but, you know, just all of that. I play for a couple churches in town, although that isn't necessarily jazz, but it kind of connects with it because it's contemporary contemporary music on one of them. Um, you know, so, so that I've done solo piano. I did the piano bar gigs for years at Hotel at Old Town, which was a solo piano thing. So kind of all of that. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities uh, for, for people. And I should mention, and you kind of touched on this too, Banda Hispanica, but also you're just sort of, you have sort of a professional Latin jazz group that plays, ah. you know, uh, barley corns and. Uh, right, Tum Tumbao, which is, yeah, the professional uh, salsa band in town now, which, uh, and, and Banda could, can, and I think is starting to be seen as sort of a, a stepping stone to potentially maybe being yeah. able to sub into Tumbao uh sort of like you could say band is like a the triple a team and, and <laughs> tumbao is like a a professional level team that we have here in town now it could be viewed like that so uh for students that are interested in that style that's and and tumbao does was doing a once a month salsa night at at barley corns and uh i i think that that mm, we'll see the the bar barley corns is opening up uh, yeah. He actually he actually invited us to play at the end of the, this month, but not enough of the band was really comfortable uh, <laughs> doing it. So it's not going to happen just quite yet, but we'll we'll see yeah. on that. I hope it can start happening maybe outside, like wave wave outdoor stage or something like that would be. That'd be but, great. Yeah, but there's definitely opportunities. So, so Jim and Will, uh, you guys play a lot together yeah. uh, and doing some stuff and for better and, for worse. And, yeah, John <laughs> John mentioned more so. Talk a little bit about Mort's and what kind of scene that is like. Yeah, Mort's is a really cool spot down at uh, Wash first in Washington, down in Old Town. Um, they've got live jazz there every Tuesday, um, you know, pretty much from five to midnight. You know, they've got like a five to seven set and then an eight to midnight set. Great chance to hear, you know, the best jazz musicians in town. Um, Jim and I have been playing there for years. Um, it's it's a great it's a great place to go here, um, like super burning, you know, high quality, you know, bebop jazz, you know, in kind of the straight ahead tradition. Um, Jim and I have played at some, at some breweries in town, restaurants in town. Um, I've done some stuff at, you know, some, some of the coffee shops like the donut hole, um, some stuff at, at clubs, like John mentioned, like barley corns, um, we we were doing some stuff at the theater Roxy's, you know, a few right. years ago. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I really liked when I moved here and that I still like about here, it's like such a, it's it's a very user friendly scene that it's easy to, it's easy to do stuff, you know. So if I was a student that moved here, um, or that lived here and started going to school, um, it's I mean you can do a lot, you know. It's really just kind of what what you make of it and how much. Um, how much initiative you have to to do some cool stuff you know and the, the exciting thing about Moritz uh in addition to that is we host uh, a monthly jam session there mm -hmm. on the, uh, the the second tuesday of every oh. month and the one thing is i've been in the um uh, central county area uh for many many years now and um this is my second year at, at wsu but i've been been in the area for much longer than that and i've been 
really excited in the past few years, I noticed that there's a lot more collaboration between all of the jazz musicians in the area. Yeah. And it's been, and I think having the, these jam sessions now uh, happen more on a regular basis, it affords the opportunity for the professional musicians to collaborate. But also we have students from all of the institutions in the area coming out to sit in and, you know, they're open to, to, um, pro players and students alike. So that's been a wonderful thing to see. Uh, and I, I took some pictures one time, you know, and I was in the, in the audience and, and the, um, the house band was uh, the drum teacher at Bethel College, uh, a student at Bethel College, um, the G GTA at Wichita State University, and someone from Friends sitting in on tenor saxophone. It was wonderful. Like, this is what we want to see happen. We want to see not only musicians, professional musicians, but it's an opportunity for students to meet other students as well. Yeah. And um, and so there are places now, uh, you know, Mortz is a bar, so you have to be 21 or older to, to get in there. But uh, there are some other venues around town that you don't have to be, like the Donut Hole, uh, has um, I think a monthly jam session there now mm -hmm. and then also a jam session I started in a restaurant in Newton which is just 25 miles north uh, called Moxie's and it's pretty much every third Wednesday so it's almost to the point where once a week there's an opportunity in a jam session environment that students can go and play and uh, sit in with pros perhaps and, uh, and learn quite a bit doing in, in that environment. Yes, I don't want to, yes, I don't want to brag, but I've been um, I've been shedding autumn leaves a lot lately on guitar. Uh, I'm uh, so I'm I'm ready to join the jam. I think uh, we could do that, and so what? And uh, those two really on guitar. I'm based on much more qualified, but on guitar, I think on those two. <laughs> Know those ones, yeah. yeah. I know all sorts of shell voicings, will, and uh, some yeah. I'm, some drop two stuff. So you know. Look go. out! I'm coming for you, yeah. uh, <laughs> Mark Foley. Where yeah. might we? What are you, you involved? I mean, you're like so active. Uh, what are some things that we places we might see you? Well, the uh, reason I'm in Wichita is because of the Wichita Symphony. That's my main gig, and uh, and I love it. I get to play the music of the masters, uh, but thankfully it's not a full. You know, it doesn't keep me busy every week, so. I get to do all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, as soon as I moved here, I was able to plug into the, the freelance scene here really easily. And, and like the guys are saying, it's it's a very nice scene. Um, but yeah, uh, the jazz thing, of course, is going really well. And then, um, I'm just trying to broaden things, mostly just to make myself a better teacher. So I'm I'm actually in a touring rock band right now. Yeah. And and I'm getting into songwriting and and the audio production side of that and i'm i'm in a touring uh bluegrass band as well yeah. um so yeah if pretty much any weekend i'm doing something i like to refer to mark foley as the swiss army knife of the <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um all right well we are we're almost out of time or we are out of time so i just wanted to finish up with one more question for you um I think it's the thing that's on a lot of our minds is what does uh, what does the jazz program look like next academic year with COVID-19 um, and how are we making adjustments around that? So I'll, I'll open that up to anybody who wants to sort of jump in um, and talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, um, the biggest question mark is like, how are ensembles gonna, gonna work when you've got that many people you know, that close together, you know, how, how is it going to work? Um, but we're definitely making some, some plans to rehearse live in the fall in safe and socially distanced ways and, you know, and keep everyone making, making good music, learning a lot in a, in a safe way. Um, Jim, do you want to talk some about yeah. how you're planning on approaching some ensemble rehearsals? Yeah, I've got some, uh, you know, I've been talking to my colleagues across the country that are facing the same issues with their jazz programs and their ensembles. Uh, so we're coming up with some unique uh, configurations. Uh, well, not so unique, but a little bit different. Um, I looked at the uh, some of the pictures and actually I have them on my my desktop. I don't know, maybe I could share them with you. Um, but there was a recording session very similar to the uh, by the WDR Big Band where the, the the 
sections were spaced out in like a triangle um, and the horn sections were in a triangle and the rhythm section was in the middle and they did this session live in May uh, and so they were able to socially distance um, in about six feet apart and it worked. Uh, so I'm looking at some some configurations like that. Um, the Stan Kenton Orchestra, actually, if you if you take it and see some old pictures of that, if you basically take that configuration and then take each member of the sections and have them distance themselves uh, a little bit farther apart, uh, it can work. And the size of our band room is actually perfect for that because not only uh, is it large enough, but the tiered seating is going to really really help. Uh, then there are there are things I've been reading some articles I mean, we just all saw one today come through about um, the you know vapor we're talking about vapor and how it is um, distributed uh, in in a rehearsal room um, there are issues that um, there are uh, topics people are talking about covering up bells and things like that and yeah. so uh, you know there's, there's been a lot of research done and I'm I'm looking forward to reading more about it but I'm really confident that uh, we can get a quality uh, live musical experience and also um, in maintaining everyone's safety so yeah. Yeah. That, those are the two most important things absolutely and I know we're looking, you know, we're going to be rehearsing in a space, all of our groups, all of our jazz groups, are, you're basically, because of the way we're moving some ensembles around, the jazz area is going to have one dedicated room, like you guys are going to have the jazz rehearsal space that's large, I mean, when it's a normal world, like the, um, the quota capacity is like 100 something, so, you know, to spread out 14, 20, 24 kids, you know, is easier to do in that space. And so, um, so yeah, I think we're all thinking about this a lot and yeah. how we can protect everyone. So, um, look, that's everything on my agenda. Is Did I miss anything? Is there anything you guys wanted to hit before I uh, hmm. it all up? It's a fun program. It we, is. We have a great time. I, I love my colleagues. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think Go ahead, Jim. It's, it's great to work with them in an administrative type in curriculum, but then we all play and collaborate as musicians with one another. It's a great, it's a ton of fun for me. Yeah, I think that's, I, you know, I think a couple of things that I would just say is that, um, that you guys have really hit on is that it, the jazz faculty especially are, they're all really collaborative together. You know, they, they're, as much as they, they teach together and work together, they play together. They recorded with each other. Um, I think the other thing that's really important is that they, their experiences are far beyond just a limited pocket of, of one style within jazz or one style of music within the wide spectrum. You know, they've all got sort of d different styles um, and backgrounds that I think are really important. When you're studying sort of the jazz and contemporary media side of things, it's really about sort of having the widest viewpoint of music possible. Um, so I guess what I would just sort of summarize and make sure I hit the, the points. So the TLDR, as the kids say, the too long didn't read, is that um, the jazz major is open to anybody who's considering, you know, a, a, a career that is less in the orchestral goalpost, but really thinking about the other stuff. Um, but even if I am considering that kind of career or an education career, the jazz program is open to all of us. Improvisation skills are not required, but they're gonna be developed and we'll work with you on that. Um, jazz lessons open to majors uh, and, and non-majors and all of our ensembles are open to non-majors. We've got a pretty active jazz scene in Wichita that you know brings in professionals um, and provides opportunities for our students to engage in it. Um, jazz Invitational, jazz, jazz Festival, great ways to sort of interact with some of the biggest names in the industry. And uh, everyone's really awesome and it rocks. Is that a good summary of it? Yes, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, with that said, uh, we'll end it here. Everyone have a good summer. Stay Thank safe. You. Yeah, wash your hands, wear a mask. Absolutely. Yeah.